Here we have an existing report where we've reported on the pH using a trend. But in addition to having the trend, we'd like a table that has the maximum and minimum values during the time frame of that event frame or child event frame, and also the times that those occurred. Let's go ahead and do that by first adding the required information to the data template, and then we'll add it to the report by adding it to the format template. So in the data template, we're going to do this for the pH, and we already have a journal action that has the pH event frame attribute linked in it. So we can use that existing one. If we didn't already have one, we could right click, insert, journal action. But if I double click on this, I'm actually going to just reuse this action parameter, which has a link to the event frame attribute for the pH. But what I need a new one of is the results definition. So we already have one for trend, but I want one that's going to help me bring in summary data. And in our case, that's going to be profile. I want the minimum and maximum values during the time frame, and I'm going to drag my action parameter over to my data source. Let me go ahead and click OK. And we've already linked this, or we're already doing a sample report on an event frame here. So I'm just going to say View Refresh, and it's going to refresh my journal and my report. So I look into the journal. I'm going to look at one of my unit batches that corresponds to my mixing unit. And my first one is mixing unit one. I'm going to look at my journal events and drill down. And these are all the journal events related to the pH. And we should have some related to the trend. So the first one here says pH trend. And the second result here actually doesn't have a label. That's because I forgot to put one on. So let me go ahead and add that back in. I didn't label it here. It's going to be the pH summary. I'll click OK, view, refresh, because I want to show you how that shows up in the journal. So here's our mixing unit one, looking in my journal events. Here's all the journal events related to pH. So somewhere under there should be both pH trend and pH summary. So if I look at my terminal states, the first result here is for pH trend. The second one here is for pH summary. And then this value is actually what I really want in my report. And in particular, it's the trace set. You can go in and look at the detailed information in the properties, the columns, and the events. But from the format template, we have the ability to pull the trace set in directly. I'm going to go to the format template as the second step, because I already have it in the, the journal. I'm going to go look at my entry in my unit information. And my entry that I use for mixing is this one. I'm going to say insert. In this case, I'm going to use trace set. This trace set is the pH summary data. And the source is going to be this trace set here. The only change I'm going to make right now is I'm going to add a border to make it easier to see. And then we're going to take a look at what the resulting table looks like in the report. So let me go to View, Refresh. We look at the report. Trend rendered. And then here we have our table. There's a few things I'd like to change. One, I don't like the timestamp format. It only has the hours, minutes, and seconds. I'd prefer for it to look something more like this table up here. Next, I don't really like the way that the number of significant digits is showing up. I'd prefer to only have two after the decimal place. And finally, I don't need these other columns that have time, error code, error description, and is good. So let me edit those three items. First, if I go into pH summary data, under rows definitions, I can remove these last four rows. Next, I can see that my format timestamp just has hours, minutes, and seconds. Instead of trying to figure out how to type this in, I'm going to go get the results definition from this one up here. And that's actually in this table in the second row. If I go into the first column of the second row, here's time UTC, and here's the time format I want. So I'm just going to copy that. 
go back to my pH summary data, go to my rows definitions, and paste that in here. Now that I've done those items, let me go ahead and refresh the report, and we'll take a look at what that table looks like. All right, it's much better. My extra columns that I had over here to the right no longer are there, and my time format is much better. Does the time actually make sense? The minimum of 8 actually occurs at the start time. That's the first time it happens. That's 9.33.26, and that is the timestamp we see. The maximum is 9.6, so that's probably this timestamp here, or this value here. So with a total of about 2 minutes, that's maybe about 15 seconds before the end. So that actually makes sense. It's about 10 seconds before the end here at 9.35.16 whereas the end time of that mixing unit is 9.35.26, 10 seconds later. So that actually does look like it makes sense. The only thing I want to change here is the number of significant digits. And this is known as custom numeric format strings. This is actually in the RT Reports template reference guide, uh, and there's a lot of different formatting that can be done here. So what I'm going to do is go into pH summary data, and under format, from that guide, I'm going to do pound, period, pound, pound. And I'm going to do that for the minimum as well. And click OK. Let me refresh my report. And for me, that looks good. That's actually what I wanted, was the two significant digits. And you can see that here. And by having only one pound, I still get 11. I don't just get a one at the beginning, but it does uh, give me the correct number of digits after the decimal place. So now we know how to use a trace set to bring summary data into our report.